Hey everybody, let's solve the problems from lesson 2 now. Okay, so the first one is I want to show that our variant of the Dirichlet function, namely the function that is equal to 0 on the irrationals, and when it's rational and it's in the form p over q, it's equal to 1 over q. So is this function Riemann integrable? Well, that's equivalent to asking if its set of discontinuities is measure 0, and in fact, it's easy to see that it's discontinuous at the rationals, but it's a little trickier to see that it is actually continuous at the irrational. To see this, let's just remind ourselves the definition of continuity. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if x minus y is less than delta, then f of y minus f of x is less than epsilon. And this is the definition of, like we said, continuity at x. So, I'll show that it's continuous at the irrationals. Let's pick some epsilon. Say epsilon is equal to 10, right? I mean, uh, epsilon is 1 over 10. So, let's look at all the rationals in 0, 1 that have denominator 10 or smaller. So, you've got, uh, you know, 1, 0 over 1, and 1 over 1. 0 over 2, 1 over 2, 2 over 2. 0 over 3, 1 over 3, blah, 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 to 3 over 3, and then you can go this all the way till you get to 9 over 10 and 10 over 10. Let's call these points over here, let's call these points xi, so it's just a collection of points. Now, with each point xi, let's associate a value di, which is the distance from my point x, that's the original point I chose, to these xi. Now, since x is presumably irrational, this is always going to be greater than 0. And this gives us an entire set of values, you know, d1 all the way through, uh, you know, d n times n plus 1 over 2. And it's obviously going to have a minimum, because it's a finite set of positive values. It'll have a minimum that's greater than 0. So let's take the minimum of these di and call it m. Now, uh, if we let delta be less than m, then on this neighborhood, where x minus y is less than delta, there are no fractions whose denominator is 10 or smaller. There's no halves, no thirds, no fourths, fifths, all the way through ninths and tenths. There's none of that. You're going to have elevenths and twelfths. You know, you'll have, uh, you could have a 1 over 11 in there, or, you know, 2 over 17. We're not making any promises about those, but you'll have only the smaller values. And since this maps to 1 over 11, and this is going to map to 1 over 17, then if x minus y is less than delta, I can ensure that f of x minus f of y is going to be less than a tenth. And you can do this for anything. You can do this for, you know, 1 over 100, 1 over a million. So it is going to be continuous on the irrationals. And therefore, its set of discontinuities is only the rationals, which is countable, therefore measure zero, and so our function is Riemann integrable. To actually find the value of the integral is a little bit complicated, and it isn't obvious what it is without using the Lebesgue integral, so we're going to hold that off for now. Okay, so now let's go to the next problem, the Cantor set. Well, the Cantor set is uncountable. How do you know the Cantor set is uncountable? Well, uh, let's say this is zero, one, right? This is C0, the first step of the Cantor set. Then we chop off the middle bit, and we end up with C1. So it's got a left piece and a right piece. Now let's continue. OK, let's suppose we want to move into the left piece. Well, we can break that into two pieces. Let's say we want to go left again. Oh, we get these two smaller pieces. Let's say we want to go right. So you continue this process infinitely, and that's how you get points in the Cantor set. So if you think about it, every point in the Cantor set is really a sequence of left, left, right, right, left. I mean, a set of instructions about how to get there. You know, there's a sort of a bijection between these sorts of sequences and points in the Cantor set. This is really just a sequence of ones and zeros, if you like. And since we know this is uncountable by the Cantor's diagonization argument, the Cantor set is uncountable. But it has measure zero because the length here is one. The length here is two thirds length that the kth step is two-thirds to the k. And since this goes to zero as k goes to infinity, and the Cantor set is contained in all of these, then the measure of the Cantor set is going to be zero. Uh, therefore, if we have a function whose 
discontinuities are on the cancel set. Even though it'll have uncountably many discontinuities, it will still be Riemann integrable.